Welcome to the third lesson. Uh, now, this lesson, and I don't know how many videos are going to be in it yet, just yet, is number three, and it's about how to develop your drawing for painting. So, I'm not going to spend too much time looking at how you do a beautiful drawing for drawing's sake. Uh, that might come at some other time, but for the moment, uh, I'm doing the, bare, the very bare bones of how you organize yourself to do some paintings for tourists. So, if this is the first video you've seen, I'll explain the series a little bit. When I was in Vanuatu last year, I noticed that um, there was very little artwork that was produced by local people. Most of the uh, souvenirs that were on sale were produced in China and sold in Chinese shops. So, my idea is to try and help people develop some painting skills and for them to be able to do some paintings and sell them to tourists. Now, my audience largely, I think, is uh, live in remote villages in places like uh, Papua New Guinea and, and Vanuatu and New Caledonia or wherever. Um, and so my delivery is very, very basic and I'm, I'm making suggestions for people who are able to paint under quite basic situations where they may not even have electricity, uh, where to buy some canvases might be um, a journey that they might do once a month or every couple of months. So my production is very simple, my delivery is very simple and um, the, you might find if you're uh, a person from a very much a developed country uh, that I've jumped over lots of probably what you think uh, is crucial information. But I'm doing that deliberately so therefore I'm making it as easy as possible for my clients to get some good drawing skills and some painting skills. Now, if you are part of my client group and uh, you're watching this, you might think, well, it's not quite the right time for me. I don't have the ideal situation where to draw or paint or don't even know how I might get my paintings to um, those cruise ship operators. Look, there's no such thing as the ideal time. Even now for me making this video, I've got my studio is full of motorbikes over there. I've had to move to a different situation. I was going to be outside and, and video today, but it's rainy, as you can probably hear. Um, there's no perfect time to do almost anything. So you've just got to make the most of it and go for it. So what you'll find with this video, there's all sorts of mistakes um, on my behalf. There's all sorts of production mistakes. I, and even my delivery, you might go, oh, he's missed out this, or I haven't done that, or I haven't explained this, or whatever. It's a matter of just doing it. My philosophy is that uh, you can wait forever to have the perfect situation, but it may not come along. So you might as well just get in there and have a go. So uh, that's where, that's my starting point. I don't know how many videos there are going to be in this sort of series. I might dig up some ones that I've made uh, many years ago for, for my students who were going to um, college and university here in Australia. If I think they're appropriate, I'll throw those in. They might have a slightly different sort of look and presentation than this. Um, so I don't know where we're going to go, we'll just sort of start and uh, have a bit of fun and hopefully get you excited so you can start drawing and start painting. Okay, where do we start? Well, you're thinking of doing some painting and so the lesson is about how do we draw for painting. And that's quite different from what you might find on YouTube. If you go on YouTube, uh, you'll see lots of videos about how to draw and they're great. There's a lot of really good uh, resources there, but they talk about drawing as a process to come out with a finished drawing and that's something a little bit different from what we're talking about here. Now, you might already have your canvas. You might have bought a canvas and the canvas could be shaped like that, or it could be a square one, or it could be rectangular. So, you've got to draw according to the shape of the canvas that you've got. Now, you'll notice there are thin ones like this, and we also have double thick ones, which we call double thick, like that. really doesn't matter. Um, you probably go for the thin ones, probably. Uh, they're lighter and cheaper, and they're, they're um, probably more likely what you'll be able to buy. So, you're learning to, you want to learn how to draw on that canvas, but we don't want you to draw on the canvas with pencil uh, because normally that's difficult to get off and it, we can do it, but it's not what's normally done. Normally we, we paint our basic drawing on there, but before we get to that point, we have to draw on um, paper. So, 
Let's imagine this is our piece of paper. Oh, the pen's not working very well. Okay, here we go. There's a piece of paper. And generally, it's A4, like that. And as I said in the previous video, put it on a clipboard like this. Uh, it's normally cartridge, but you might just have some photocopy paper. That really doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be good paper. And you've got your uh, HB pencil. So, depending on the shape of your canvas, so if your canvas is a square, you might just do a square. There it is like that. Well, that's not a very good square. And you would sketch for that. So, all right, we might turn ours into a square. So, there is our... Oh, this pen's not working very well either. Must be because how clean this board. That's it. Anyway, we've got the shape of our canvas uh, and we're going to do a sketch. Now, the kind of sketch that we're going to do is just outlines. Now, these are just lines like this. Now, a drawing like that, that's called a line drawing. Um, and it gives us a shape and it also could tell us proportions. You know, how wide is that in relationship to how high it is. So we're not getting into tone. Now, what, what tone is, tone is when there's light areas and dark areas on there. So tone really talks about the lightness or darkness of something. Now, some people might decide to do drawings that have all that in it, light and dark, and work out all sorts of problems in drawing and do a detailed tone drawing for a painting. But most of the time, uh, people just do little line drawing sketches. So. Let's just say this is our square. And we don't want to take our canvas out and draw outside on it directly. It's probably a good idea to draw on paper first. Uh, and the reason for that is, let's just say you decide you want to do um, a seascape, right? You want to go down to the beach, you've got your square sort of shape, you've got your pad, and so you might go down to the beach, You've already worked out where you want to um, do your painting and it might be looking down the beach and that way you go, oh yeah, a couple of palm trees will be here and the, and the, um, and the uh, sand goes out from the water and there's the water and there's some kids playing there, whatever it is along, along the beach. Uh, this is the process that you go by. Now, we're only going to do line, right? So, like this, we're not going to put any tone in it. And the reason why we're doing a drawing like this is because we're going to work out what's going to go on the canvas. We don't want to start painting directly onto the canvas because we might make mistakes and that's used up valuable paint and that, therefore it's got to be painted over and done again. So that's not a very economical way to go. We're better off to uh, play around on a piece of paper and rub things out if it doesn't work or turn the paper over and work on the other side. Now the most important thing is when you go to... Uh, the scene that you're going to draw is not drawing straight off. It is looking. Looking is the most important thing. So, let's say the beach is down there. So, I don't want to stand up and do the, do the painting. Um, I probably want to sit down, especially if I'm going to eventually bring all the paints out and paint uh, from real life in that position. So, Right, that standing up would be difficult to paint, although you can do that, but you'd need a big easel uh, to paint on. Uh, and I'm working on the theory that maybe you don't have an easel. But we'll get, get to that a little bit later. So, the first important thing is to stand in that position and think about, well, is that painting going to work on my canvas? Uh, especially if it's square, there might be something else that might suit that shape. But if you decide, no, that's fine, that's, that's, that's the only shape canvas I've got, and uh, I want to paint that scene. So the important thing is to sit there and think about it. What is it that you want in there? What things do you want to take out? And so, looking there, I go, well, I've got to put the horizon in. I can see kind of a horizon. What's the horizon? The horizon is where, say, the water meets the sky. They're, they're very furthest you can see away. You know, there's that kind of little line. By the way, there is no lines in, in nature. That's all tone. And, variations of different colours, but we'll come back to that later too. So, putting my horizon line, looking at it, putting in the beach in there, I'm doing my rough sketch. Now, 
I'm sketching these sort of things. There's a, there's a palm tree here and the beach comes around there and there's a wave there. I'm looking at that. I'm looking at both my paper and I'm looking at the subject. You don't want to put the paper down here, look at the subject, put it in your brain and try and remember it and then put it down on the paper. You don't want to do that. Um, you've got to be looking at your subject the whole time. So look at the subject, look at your paper and draw from that. All right? And there's a couple of ways people do that. Often they go like this. They go, they're looking at the palm tree or whatever it might be, draw a little bit of the tree, put a bit more down, stop, look at it again, think, do a bit more, look at more areas, draw a bit more. A stop-start approach. That works really well. Other people, and notice how I held, held my pencil. Some people hold it this way, and that's normally how you're taught to write. Some people hold it that way. So, and normally they hold it that way when they're doing a big piece of work, right? And it really depends on your body because you can't, when you're drawing like that, it comes down and hits your body. So this way is a little bit more control for smaller works. But it's totally up to you how you want to hold your pencil. So hold your paper up to the subject um, at a slight angle and just sketch it, whatever you think is going to go in there. Now at that point, uh, I start writing things down to remind myself. So I look at the landscape and go, oh, actually, I notice way off in the distance it's really, really dark. Um, and it's dark under those trees and it, there's really a lot of contrast. So I might end up doing some really terrible sketch like this. And some parts will be in tone, some will be in line. And off to the side, I might write little notes to myself. So I might say, oh, um, uh, put a... I don't know, uh, a blanket on here and a person laying on a blanket or an umbrella or something like that. Um, and I've noticed that most of the information, most of the subject is on my right side because I'm looking down the beach. So to balance it up I go, oh well we might need a boat over the side here. Boat. And the boat looks like it's a sailing boat or canoe coming into the shore and that balances up and maybe a big cloud over here to balance the whole picture up too. So the, the difference between drawing for selling a drawing because it's a, an artwork in its own right and doing a drawing for painting is this is for the artist to understand what's really happening and to plan the composition, right? When all the things going together, that's called a composition. So it's to help them plan that. But it does more than that. When you're in a position where that's where you want to paint, and you're not relying on a photograph because if you took a photograph and you went back to your studio, back to your house, or on your kitchen table, wherever you're working, uh, and you're working from a photograph, that's quite different from when you were there in real life. But I'm working on the assumption that you're painting from real life. You may not have a camera, you may not be able to get the photos processed, so we're talking about real life. The point of doing a sketch first is because you're going there and you're thinking about everything there. You're thinking about the composition. Well, goes where? And not everything's going to be there because you might have to add extra things. You might have to add some people doing things. You might have to add some canoes in. You might have to take some things out and put some things in for your picture to work. Um, the main thing for doing the sketch is it helps you think about how you're going to do all those sorts of things. Um, and what are you going to put in, what are you going to leave out, but it makes you think about everything. What does a palm tree actually look like? Even though you've seen it every day of your life probably, um, until you come to paint it and draw it, you don't really understand it. And that's the same with water and all sorts of things. So, uh, and don't worry if you're worried about how do I paint water or how do I paint a tree, I'll, I'll walk you through that, I'll show you how to do that. But we're at the very beginning now. So. We do our sketch, we do a, a line drawing sketch of what we're going to do. We do some what we call annotations. They are little notes to ourselves of what we're going to change. Also, when we're doing that, uh, it helps us work out what sort of colours we're having. So you might decide when you're doing your little sketch of, um, I don't know, there's, there's the sand coming down, there's the water, or maybe there's a distant mountain or something over here, and there's palm trees here, and there's a boat there. You're able to work out, oh yes, I need blue here, blue, uh, different blue over here, blue, whatever blue. Um, you might decide, oh, it's a distant purple mountain, purple. Uh, you need a, an ochre, come on the sand plus white. 
you can see what we're doing is we're working out all the colours you, that you might need. Right? Um, and if you don't have the, the colours in the tube, like a pure particular blue, well then you've got to know how to make that particular colour. Okay? And all that's possible. So this helps you work out your composition, but also works out... Um, it also helps you work out what other resources you might need. So, for example, you might need to go and study a tree first before you start putting one through here, up, up close. Um, now, that might scare you a little bit to do a big scene like that, uh, but I can walk you through and tell you how what the process is to paint that, so don't be too concerned. But if you're really concerned first off about doing a landscape that's really complicated, just do one thing. It might be that on a square uh, canvas like that, you might just do a big shell, and that's going to be a lot, a lot easier. So, um, and in some cases, when when you do just a shell on its own, um, a lot of artists decide to draw it uh, in great detail first, and that helps them understand what's really happening with the shell, and that speeds up their painting. So, some artists go straight into the painting after doing a light line drawing sketch, and others go to great amount of detail. Uh, so, work on the subject that you're able to uh, complete successfully uh, and then gradually work up to something a little bit more complicated. Now on the practical side, um, you've got your HP pencil that you're going to use. How do you sharpen it? Well, you can sharpen it with a disposable blade uh, or proper pencil sharpener. It really doesn't matter. There's lots of different ways to do that. If you don't have an eraser to rub out your mistakes, uh, even bread, yes, bread, can be used uh, to rub out mistakes on from the pencil on paper as well. A uh, couple of other technical things. If you're going to do a, a really um, detailed drawing, there are a few things that you do in tone that's quite different from a line drawing from here. And we'll look at that a little bit later down the track. And there's things like how do you how do you smudge work and how do you stop smudges getting on your work. There's lots of other technical things and uh, tips, but at the moment it's just line drawing and we're keeping it all very simple. Uh, just say you've done drawing and for some reason you want to copy it. How do you copy it? Well, a good way is to take your, your drawing that's on a piece of paper, take it to a window, put another piece of the paper over the top and draw it again and you might add some more things. So uh, there's ways and means. You just have to be inventive. You know, I've made it sound all pretty simple. Oh yeah, it's just a matter of drawing. How do you do that? Okay, here are some tips that will help you. As I said, you've got to look and you've got to make some judgments. So for example, you go, yes, there's the line, horizon line going through there. But how tall is that tree? So how tall is that tree in comparison to that person? So there's a few different ways. So when we're talking about proportion. And I'll show you some videos about how we get proportion too, um, separate to this. So for example, off in the distance you might get your pencil, close one eye, I normally close my left eye, but um, I know my right eye, but it's up to you. I go, well, down there I stretch my arm out and I look at the top of the pencil and put my finger down here and go, that palm tree, I've got the palm tree there and the bottom is there, that tree is... Hmm, down there, oh, five times taller than the person that's near it. Or that tree, in comparison to the sailing boat that's way up there, is so many times bigger. So we, we use one thing in there, in that scene, and we compare that to everything else to work out sizes. So, for example, uh, let's just say that's our tree there. And what I was doing then is I was working out how tall our tree is. Let's say the tree is there. I go, that's how big that tree is. And I'm comparing that to down through here, that's the same, whatever that height is, down through there, there's I don't know, where that mountain starts, and the boat that's out there is only so many times the height of uh, parts of that tree, um, so we use a pencil like that. Now, there's some other techniques I'll show you a little bit later on, but that's generally it, we compare one thing with another. What about angles? Where, where is everything going? Okay, so... We go, all right, where's the beach? The beach is sloping into the water, and that varies because um, it's not flat. The, the land goes into the water, so 
One way to do that, also using a pencil, we stretch out, out of the arm and rest this on that surface, that plane, and bring it back to our drawing. So we go, oh, there it is. Uh, there's my drawing again. There's that angle, and I'm bringing it back. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, another way is thinking about when something goes off an angle, which if, if there was a long piece of string or a big piece of wood uh, resting on that surface, where would it go to? Does it go up? Oh, yes, it goes over there. Or it goes down to here. That goes over there. That comes over here. So there's lots of guess, guesswork. So you'd be doing lots of little lines all over the place. Um, and it's important to get all that right in your pencil drawing and not doing it on the canvas. You want to solve as many of those problems here as possible. So it's a matter of looking at it and understanding it. Uh, but in the end, you don't want to spend forever doing that. It's about trial and error. And so you're going to make lots of mistakes. That's fine. It's, uh, it's only pencil, you can rub it out. But we look at those sort of angles. So we go, oh yes, that's a good angle. And I'll show it this way. Let's just say that that's our scene down through there. We hold our pencil like that as if it's that's the angle of the roof and bring it back to our paper. So on. It's kind of guesswork. A lot of it's guesswork. But after a while, you'll get it. Uh, there are some tools available for working those sorts of things out. Now there's also some tools of working out shape and proportion and all those things too, but that's a little bit more complicated that we don't we don't really need to get into that. All you need to do is work from the shape of your canvas. So you go, oh well, that's the shape of my canvas. I, I can't get a lot of sky in there on that picture. Uh, what can I get? Oh yeah, I can get something like this. So it's about trial and error, really. Be prepared to make some mistakes. Have a bit of fun. Uh, don't get too serious about it. Don't worry about people coming over your shoulder uh, and, and making some comments. Uh, I'm, not, I'm sure they probably wouldn't, but maybe they do, or maybe they'll even say some negative things. You can say, well, have a go yourself. In, in fact, they might. They might teach you some things. Uh, but it's unlikely anyone who's going to come along and criticise your work can actually do better than you anyway. So, and it's not a competition. Right, and it's a process. Some of you are going to be better at drawing than others, and some of you are going to be better at painting. Some people are going to be better at composition. Some people are better at music. Some people are better at singing. It really doesn't matter. It's about having a go, having a bit of fun. So uh, take plenty of paper out when you go out with you. When you're drawing, uh, try and have a chair rather, and, and do things in a comfortable position. If you're standing up, you're not going to do it for very long. If there's flies around you, that's going to drive you crazy. Um, wear a big hat so it's not too uh, too hot wear sunglasses if you can um, just take your time work on subjects some subjects are a lot easier than others you know now I was uh, talking about drawing down the beach but there's maybe a lot of things there that's too complicated you might decide oh I'm only gonna look out to the water and draw the distant um, hill that might be there distant island and water and waves crashing and whatever that might be a lot easier for you so it's up to you. What you've got to observe, one, a really important thing to observe when you're looking at your subject is looking at where the shadows go. Right? So the shadow, there will be shadows somewhere, unless it's a day like I've got today where there's almost no shadows because it's raining and there's lots of clouds around. But the stronger the light, sunshine, the stronger the shadows. So remember that. So bright light, dark shadows. And you want to put that in your sketch where the shadows are. That's really important to remind you about that. Now, when you come back to paint, it might be a different sort of time of the day. Um, so you'll have to observe that as well. Put detailed notes about the colours of things because you, you'll get really surprised with um, what's really happening out there. There's a thing called aerial perspective, and that means things that are further away tend to be more grey, more fuzzy, uh, and often a little bit more blue or a little bit more blue-purple. Depends on what country you come from. So for example, uh, in the mountains in Australia, because we have a lot of gum trees and the gum trees express this particular oil from them, uh, the colouring in the landscape is quite different from other places. So uh, where you're from, your colours are going to be kind of specific to your sort of area. That's why uh, you shouldn't watch some videos and, and read books where it says, oh, for the sky you must use this, or, the, or for the trees you must use that, because that's fine for their, in their country, but it may not be for you. So, And also it may not suit your colour scheme. So 
Uh, I paint in a very bright way. My, my colours tend to be uh, more Queensland and more tropical. I'm a more tropical sort of painter, but a lot of uh, other artists here in Tasmania, their colours tend to be really dark and, and quite gloomy. Um, so, and that's because I was largely brought up in the tropics and my colour palette, colouring scheme, is quite different from a lot of other artists. So, uh, and what I'm trying to say is that it's up to you what colours you have and uh, so it's not for someone else to come and say those colours are wrong, no such thing. Whatever works for you, if you think it looks great, terrific. Uh, so, where do we go from here? Um, bum, 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 bum. Nothing, I think that's enough really, it's really basic, let's not get complicated. Let's uh, get on to the next video. Oh, before we go, one last thing. What makes a good painter is, or a good painter is someone who's a good observer, right? Because you can't paint something if you haven't observed it. So work through your eyes first, then you stick that information in your brain and you use that in your painting. So for example, uh, if I was going to go down the local beach and paint the local beach, even though I've painted beaches lots and lots and lots of times, I'd go down there and sit there and observe very uh, carefully what's happening. What's happening with the sky? What are the colours in there? What does what, how does the wave work? What colour is the wet sand? What's the colour of the dry sand? What's the colour of this? Lots and lots and lots of questions, right? I wouldn't work on just my assumptions. I wouldn't go, oh, well, the sky's one blue colour, which it isn't. It's generally two, but we'll have a look at that later. Uh, so it's all about careful observation, and that's what it comes back to the drawing. The drawing is to help you understand your landscape or whatever it is you're, you're painting to take your time to get all that information in your head so when you're ready to paint. So when you come to paint it's not a stressful situation because you already understand largely the subject that you're going to paint. It's a matter of just taking your time and getting into that. Now I was going to produce a video on how we draw small objects on a table and I still might do that, I'm not sure yet. But the principles of drawing something small on a table is no different from the principles of drawing a big landscape. It's about observation. And, and being critical about what you see. So, for example, when you're drawing something like a number of objects together, you've got to look at where's the light coming from. Is that surface all one colour or does it change? Looking for subtleties, right? Uh, where's the reflected light? Does light bounce from one thing to another? And so, for example, water often does that. Water reflects things. Um, ground, if it's um, sandy ground, is much brighter than something that's a little bit higher up. So it's about careful observation. Whatever you're drawing, whatever you choose in your village, it's about taking your time and observing things. What angles, what colours, where's it light, where's it dark? So it's not always about how good you can represent something realistically either, as I said in other videos. So you may just decide that you're going to draw things and paint things in a very flat way or in a very abstracted way or a naive way. That's totally up to you. Don't be put off. Don't think that everything that you have to do is going to, needs to be like a photograph. It doesn't. It doesn't. Just express yourself. And that what's, that's why drawing is so good because it expresses yourself. But in order to paint well and produce some good art generally requires good observation. So it's about observation, spending some quality time looking at the subject that's there, thinking deeply about it, what, what is it there I'm really seeing, and taking your time, and don't get frustrated. If you're impatient, it isn't going to work. You need to take your time, and you're drawing on every stage of it. If you try and rush parts of it, it isn't going to work. Uh, so just take your time. When you've got your confidence, you'll speed up. Absolutely no doubt about that. So, careful observation, and it doesn't matter what subject that you're going to paint or draw. Right? You don't need to go to a video on how do I draw a lemon, how do I draw a pear, how do I draw a rock. It's all the same. So, how you observe it, seeing what's happening, angles, texture, light, dark. Just observe.